What's up everyone, Takedown here. Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you some PlayStation 5 rumors. As of right now, these are just rumors. Sony has not officially announced anything, but some of these are very interesting, so let's get right into it. The first rumor is the release date. A lot of people still think that the PlayStation 5 may come out in 2019. I highly doubt it, just because if Sony was going to release a new console this year, they would do what they did with every console they've ever released, and that is announce it in January or February of that year. The fact that they did not announce it back in January or February of this year makes me believe that there is not going to be a new system out this year. The rumor as of right now is that it's going to come out between 2020 and 2021. Personally, I would rather see it come out in 2021 just because myself, I never get the console at launch. I usually wait a year until all of the bugs are out of the system. So if the system comes out in 2021, I will not be getting the system until 2022. Personally, I would rather see it come out in 2021 just because I play my PlayStation 4 all of the time. Right now, I don't really need an upgrade for a PlayStation 5 because back this past December, I had to get a PlayStation 4 Slim because my original PlayStation did have problems with it. But honestly, I could see it coming out in either 2020 or 2021. Like I said, I'm not going to be getting it launched year. I'm going to wait the next year. But it would be interesting to see if that is going to come true. A lot of people are leaning towards 2020. Myself, I would rather see it come out in 2021. The next rumor is the price at launch. Right now, it is rumored to be $500, which is $100 more than the PS4 was at launch. Now to me, like I said, I'm not going to be purchasing the system at launch anyways, and on top of that, I always buy my system on either Black Friday or on Christmas, so, so I usually get a big discount anyways. I never pay full price for anything, whether it is a console or a video game, I never pay full price for it. But given some of the other features that are rumored right now, if some of the other features are true, it makes sense why the PlayStation 5 might be $500 at launch, because there's a lot going into it this year. One of those features is backwards compatibility with the PlayStation 4. This is something I personally would love to see and I really hope actually happens just because I buy a lot of my games digitally on a PlayStation 4. I don't go out and buy discs anymore because in my opinion, number one, it is so much easier to buy digital copies of games. And also the other reason is the PlayStation Store itself has a lot of sales throughout the year and they're even on new games. So instead of me paying $80 for a brand new game, which is what a game costs over here in Canada, I usually get them for about $40 usually a month or two after they come out. If a game comes out in about October, I usually wait till Black Friday to purchase the game. Now this past year, I have purchased a lot of video games on my PlayStation 4 digitally, and if the PlayStation 5 were to come out, I really hope it is backwards compatible so I can still play some of those games that I purchased back on the PlayStation 4. It is possible though, if they do the backwards compatibility for the PlayStation 4, it might just be for disc games only, which I really hope that's not the case. And the main reason I say that is, it is now 2019. A lot of people buy games digitally now, myself included, and the main reason I buy games digitally is because I don't have a store that sells new PlayStation 4 games near me. I have to drive 30 to 45 minutes away to the closest store. So instead of me having to go and do that every time I want to go and purchase a game, if the game is going to be on sale on the PlayStation Store, on my PlayStation itself, why not buy it digitally? So personally, I think that the PlayStation 5 will have backwards compatibility with the PlayStation 4. A lot of people think that this means whenever they say backwards compatibility, that it's going to mean the PlayStation 3, PlayStation 2, and PlayStation 1. I don't see that happening right now, and the main reason, like I said, is digital games. The PlayStation 4 is the first time that people started to buy digital games excessively. They could buy them on the PlayStation 3 digitally, but on the PlayStation 4, after the PlayStation 4 came out, people started to buy more and more games digitally. It would make sense to only make it backwards compatible with the PlayStation 4. The next feature is a two terabyte hard drive. This is something that I can see realistically happening. And the reason for that is you guys know yourself going from the PlayStation 3 to the PlayStation 4 video games in general took up a lot more space. They took up a lot more gigabyte than you were used to. I could see personally that Sony is going to continue this trend with the PlayStation 5 and games on the PlayStation 5 may take up a lot more space than they did on the PlayStation 4. 
So if they're going to make games that take up a lot more space and a lot more gigabytes, it does make sense to have the system have a bigger hard drive at launch. On the PlayStation 3, the average game for me was less than 20 gigabytes. On the PlayStation 4, the average game for me takes up 50 gigabytes. And a lot of my games take upwards of 80 gigabytes per game. That's including everything from downloading the game and all the updates the game has ever had. That is a lot of space. So I could see games for the PlayStation 5 taking upwards of 100 gigabytes. So it does make sense why they would make a two terabyte hard drive at launch. And they might even go up from there throughout the years after the PS5 is launched. The next feature is something that we already know is going to happen because it happens every year and that is a new controller. Usually they stay with the same general design and the PS4 was the most advanced one in my opinion because it is the one that had the touch screen. However, the PlayStation 5 controller DualShock 5 is rumored to also include a camera which in my opinion does make sense why they would do this because these days, nobody usually has a camera with their new PlayStation 4s. They usually don't go out and purchase the camera excessively, but there is some games that if you did have a camera, you could have face recognition. You could go and put your face on characters in the games. And to me, that would make it easier for those people. But myself, it's not a feature that I would ever use. In the last rumor right now, there's not that many details on it, but it is a new PlayStation Plus Premium. Apparently, there's going to be a new premium PlayStation Plus. It doesn't say anything what that's going to mean, but I'm assuming it may mean different games that month. If you have the premium, you might get more free games every month. You might get more discounts, bigger discounts, different things like that. So it's going to be interesting, but with a premium PlayStation Plus, something tells me it's going to cost a lot more than the regular PlayStation Plus, which for me costs $80. I usually get it Black Friday on the PlayStation Store on sale, but still, if it's $80, something tells me the premium is going to be upwards of $100, maybe $120. So it's not really going to be for me. But these are some of the rumors for the PlayStation 5 as of right now. Some of them are very interesting. A lot of them I see happening, but some, like I said, don't really matter to me, like the price and the hard drive, because number one, for the hard drive, I have an external hard drive, which I could just plug right in. And the price at launch doesn't matter for me because I'm not going to buy the system at launch. I'm going to wait for the second year. But if these rumors are true and they do come true and Sony does announce them, which ones are you really excited for? Which ones are you ready for? Are you guys going to be getting the PlayStation 5 at launch? Are you going to be getting the PlayStation 5 at all? I hear a lot of different mixed reactions whenever it comes to the PlayStation 5. Some people say they don't need a PlayStation 5 because the PlayStation 4 is so advanced that they're okay with just sticking to it. Other people want to get the new console. I want to hear what you guys think. Let me know down below. I am going to leave this video here. I'll see you guys in the next one. Please take care. Peace.